What's happening hardscapers? Today we're going to be installing hardscape lighting. I'm going to talk about design and spacing on this project. Let's get into this. All right, we've done a video on how to actually go ahead and install the lighting. So I'm gonna skip the wiring portion. If you wanna learn more about that, there's gonna be a link in the description below, but also at the end of this video, you'll see that video pop up if you wanna go check that out. Here's an overview of how we wire these hardscape lights together. The wire coming from the transformer and the lights will each split and will connect to one another. The next wire that will run to the second light will also split with one side tying into one and the other side tying into the other. This allows for the current to flow to the next light where we'll continue the same connection. At the final light, we'll continue with the same steps except there will be no additional wire running to another light. But more what I want to talk about today is the actual design, how we came up with the design, what we're trying to do, how we're going to try to eliminate as many hot spots as much as possible, as well as play with textures and shadows, but most importantly, our spacing from one light to another with this. Okay, you can see that we've got two two lights here we've got I skipped this pillar because this light is going to shine onto this pillar as well as we have one cutting the distance between these two pillars in half which will also shine on that one but I have one on the pillar and then five on this wall and then two on that back wall there doing low voltage is incredibly easy uh, it is so you got two wires coming off the actual light fixture so you split that and you also have a wire coming from the transformer and then a wire coming to the next light. So you split those, that gives you two, four, and six. And then you just take one from the transformer, one from going to the next light, and then one from the actual light. Put them together, twist them, put them right on, and then do it one more time, once again. And then what we'd like to do is also ensure that we use a little bit of electrical tape there to go around. It takes the tension off. If I try to pull this, it's not pulling on these fixtures within the morettes, but it's putting that tension on our actual electrical tape there. The morettes are actually silicone filled, so you can see that the silicone is oozing out of them there. That's perfect. But positioning is super important with these lights. So I'm gonna to talk to you about how I go about them. When you only have one light between two pillars it's just an easy calculation to center that light between the two but what's also really important is I do like working in odd numbers as opposed to even numbers you don't want to have too many hot spots which is two lights shining in close proximity to one another so you want to eliminate those outdoor lighting is about concealing the actual light fixture so it's not shining in your eyes and it's also about eliminating those hot spots and ensuring that you're working with shadows because shadows also so add to the texture of your entire surface. And we want to play with those textures with this graphics wall because you can see it is a multi-dimensional wall so there's pieces in and out from one another so we want to play with those textures and get some beautiful looking work with these lights. Now you see I do have some shims under the caps. The caps aren't completely down. That's because we need more product to go one more layer higher than we actually are here. So I've just measured out my lights roughly and got them wired in so that my client can actually at least enjoy the space a little bit here. But going off of what I'm doing here for design, I've got an easy wall here that if I measure, it comes out to about 12 feet. It comes out to about 110 inches here. So with two lights that I've got for my run here even though it's not odds i'm not going to just use one light on this wall we have enough that we can do two lights and avoid having another light here on the cap which would be kind of useless being that the beam spread would be blocked by this wall and we would have a hot spot on that wall so what we do is we do 110 inches which is our wall length and then we have two lights so i'm going to divide this by two and that's going to give me the distance between one light to the other but we're left with this area here from this wall to the first light and the area at the end to the first light here so to calculate that we're going to divide this by two and then 27.5 is going to be the distance from this wall to the middle of the first light and then we've got 55 inches to the next light and then 27.5 from the light to the end of that wall and that is our spacing there. Now if I go ahead and I measure this wall, I'm going to go to the end here and I'm going to go So 
So that's 300. That's 363 inches. And I've got five lights. So now, and hopefully you can see, I'm gonna go 363 inches divided by five lights. That gives me 72.6. And then I'm gonna divide that by two. And that's 36.3 from this wall to the first light. And then 72.6 to the next, 72.6, 72.6, 72.6. .6, and then that final end piece is going to be 36.3. And that's how you get your spacing there. Once again, did the same thing with this area. Uh, we, I didn't lift up the caps here. We're just gonna clean everything up. This wall is gonna be completed once we get that final layer in here, as well as getting enough product to finish off that back wall. And then we'll be done with this. This will be nicely lit up. Now I do have to give a shout out here to Dylan. You can catch him on Instagram. He makes incredible content, the landscaping by Dylan for that little formula there. In the past, I kind of did a less formal calculation to be able to get a perfect distance from one light to another, and then figuring in that distance from the end of the wall to that first light, and then the last light to the end of the wall. But Dylan broke it down really easy in one of his stories or in one of his reels, which is really incredible. So big shout out to Landscaping by Dylan on Instagram, and I'll leave a link to his Instagram in the description below as well. Hey, I hope this video has helped you in some way. Please like this video if you found it helpful for whatever reason. This is in a series of videos from this project from start to finish. So there's gonna be a playlist popping up somewhere here that you can click on, see this project from start to finish. Comment below any questions that you may have and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more hardscaping content like this. Thank you so much for watching.